So I started to speak about uh, my experiences in Hull Korea when I was still a follower of Bomjun. And uh, when suddenly there was this ban of the foreigners, and I was quite I was quite broken down from that because I had nowhere to go anymore. I programmed my life in Europe fr to go away from Europe forever. So I had no one in Europe. I never had a family and never had a home actually after my mother died in my 19th years. And uh, I was, I had a difficult life and the relationship I gave up and I told him, you can find another girlfriend, uh, I'm going to do meditation in Nepal. And so you just cannot go back. People are changing, yes, situations are changing. I had nowhere to go back. And I, the day when Bomjon and all the people moved out, I told, okay, if I cannot stay in the compound of Bonjun, the compound, the enclosed compound, which is 13 kilometer circumference, but there was this barbed wire fence, then okay, I love the jungle, so Hal Korea is a huge jungle. I am going to stay outside of the compound, but I am continuing to stay. This was my wish. So I was so broken down that I left all my things, my tent, just my ID card and such things I took with a little bag, but all my clothes, everything, computer, I left in the tent. And I just went north from Bomjon's compound. And uh, I decided I am a yogini. Uh, if it was possible to live in the jungle for rishis, yoginis in thousands of years ago, maybe I will manage. But I am a person who needs, a woman needs clean water and food and some shelter. But I was just decided I love the jungle. I cannot leave the jungle to some dirty bazaar, Indian style, noisy city. And so I went to north. It was during the daytime, the day when all the foreigners moved out. So I, uh, there was some, yes, I, there was a little like argument with Kempo Sunam Gürme, who was kind of speaker for, well, spokesperson for Bomjon. Bomjon was always somewhere inside. He hardly ever deal, dealt with uh, things. He just gave orders and his followers were telling us the orders. So there was always a kind of confusion. Is it really Bomjon's, his will? And I see the same confusion is now among his current followers because he's so obscure, he's somewhere hidden always, doing his dark things behind the jungle somewhere, torturing people, locking up people, raping nuns, having sex with many girls. He has to have his privacy. He hardly ever goes on a daily basis to people. And if he has some hut or any villa where he stays, people cannot, are not allowed to go there. It's not, he's not accessible for <laughs> normal people. And so I uh, decided, okay, I go to the north. Uh, this Kempo told me, no, no, you are going to stay here. Oh yeah, there was an incident. I told him, I want to hear Bomjon himself telling me that I have, to, I have to move out. Because innerly, there started to be already these psychic experiences in meditation. I still didn't know Nepali. Oh, at one point, Bonjon visited our settlement. Like he was nearby, but I, I'm telling that he was just inaccessible and he was coming very rarely. At one point, he came to speak with Kempo and he walked out. This was a big celebration for us, Andy, everyone. Andy was not there at that point, but before when, when Bomjong came, Andy, oh, Marichi, Marichi, Guruji is here. So he, he made sure that his visit to us was for us like a big celebration. And so at that point when he came, 
later on when Andy was not there, um, I heard innerly Bhitra uh, Raknu, Bhitra Raknu. I didn't understand Nepali. I heard this Nepali voice inside me, him looking at him. He was speaking telepathically to me. So I asked uh, people, Kempo and others, what does it mean, Raknu, Bitra Raknu? And they didn't tell me the truth. Because uh, now I know in ne Nepali, uh, it means Bitra Raknu, it means uh, to put that person inside my compound. So I heard this, this saying, Bitra Raknu, Bitra Raknu. Uh, I was sitting in meditation and praying when I saw Bom John. And so I was connected to him. And I felt that uh, that means something. I even went to cyber cafe in Simra to find on the internet, because we didn't have internet in Hal Korea. Uh, what does it mean? And I found some, I was guessing that he wanted me to stay. So at that point when we were moving out, I told Kempo, I want to hear it from his own mouth. Maybe it's just, you are speculating that we foreigners should move out, but maybe Guruji doesn't want me to move out. And this was the, the main topic of the 2000 year, 2011 year, because everyone was guessing, does Guruji want Marichi there in Kalkoria, or Marichi is supposed to be banned from Kalkoria? It was always, Guruji wants Marichi banned. Once Marici banned, and everyone was speaking about Marici being banned. It was a main topic. And so at that point I called, I told Kempo, call here Guruji, I want to speak with him. So he came to the settlement and he sat, sat down and I was very scared because we all had huge respect to him. And I didn't speak Nepali yet, well that time, and I told Kempo, translate him, please, that I want, that uh, I have a feeling that you want me to stay here. Is it true or not? And the Bom John's answer was, as always, he does things to confuse you even more. His answer was, everyone has to move out. He didn't tell that you, you, you. But I asked him about myself. Do you want me to move out? If you invited me here from Europe to translate your um, molam, uh, your prayer, if I gave up everything in Europe just to live in the jungle, in the lap of the beautiful jungle, why have to move out now to a village or a bazaar? There are better cities and better villages in Europe if I have to live in, among people in a village. But we don't have jungles in Europe. And so he told, no, this was just my thought, uh, but this was all struggling inside me. Why did I give up everything to Europe? Even people helped me to play the, pay the plane ticket because I didn't have money. And Bom John just told, everyone must move out from Hal Korea, like a general answer. And I asked uh, Kempo, can I ask some more questions? No more questions. That was it. Then he walked back to his inner compound. So that was a big disappointment from, for me because I realized that even Bom John, from whom I was feeling that he has this, he knows people's thoughts, and I was feeling that he wants me there because he was telling me, Bitra Raknu, Bitra Raknu, like a mantra inside me. And it fulfilled when he kidnapped me and Bitra Rakego, I mean, Bitra Rakno, Bitra means inside, in, and Rakno, put. So to put inside, to put inside. You can also use this in Nepali for people. Not like in English, you don't put people, you send people or place people. But in Nepali it's fitting, it's possible to say Bitra Rakno. I was hearing this all the time. Bitra Raknu, Bitra Raknu. But the thing is that, I would like to warn you, you can experience psychic things from Wom Jones, miraculous. But it doesn't mean that it's positive. This is the catch. 
the bitter arachnu, I, that time when I was so convinced that Bomjon is divine, I was convinced that he is in deep in Samad, he is meditating and communicating with gods and who knows what. And he was having sex with deep shikata <laughs> and eating uh, two times a day good food. But I didn't know it at that point. We don't know. So, Bhitrarakno, uh, Bhitrarakno, yes, he wanted to, me to put inside, but on chains and in tortures and rape. So, uh, he's like, an, uh, like a robot. It was like going on him, in him, Bhitrarakno, Bhitrarakno. But it doesn't mean that he wanted good for my soul and good for my body. And he didn't want anything spiritual. He wanted to harm me. Just it was not yet the time, probably. There were no conditions to kidnap me at that point. So, I just left all my things there and I went to sleep. Uh, I went to, to the forest in the north and when it started to be evening, so I thought uh, I have to climb a tree and sleep on the tree because on the land they would find me. And the Nepali media is writing, oh, the foreigner climbed a tree because she was afraid of tigers and wild elephants. And I was afraid more of Bom Jones people because I, like here I was sitting in much taller grass and during the day when I escaped to the north and then you hear everything in a jungle and you hear that people are coming after you. They were searching for me. Actually, he sent Darshan, my later torturer, and two or three other guys to search for me. And first I, ha I hid in the tall grass. There is this Fanta, called, the name of the grass is Fanta, uh, I think. Sukla, Fanta, Sukla. Yeah, I think it's Fanta. And I, I lie down in the grass, so they didn't see me. They looked around, the marich is nowhere. And when I heard that they went to a different direction, then I quickly ran inside the forest. It was at the edge of the forest, Halkoria. And I climbed the... There are so good trees to climb in Nepal, because they are very, like... Um, they are not straight. They have steps, you can hold on them. And so I climbed the tallest tree in my life. Really, it was so tall that uh, if I fall down, I die. Uh, and I also, when I climbed up, I, was, I realized that if I climb to the thin uh, branches, then tigers never go to thin branches because they would fall down, they, they are scared. And maybe bears could go after me, but the bear would not have... Uh, usually, bear doesn't eat meat, yes? Yeah? So it has no reason to attack me on the top of a tree. More tigers or leopards, more. And I think it was very strange. Suddenly, from beautiful, sunny day, like now, clouds started together in the evening. And such an orcane, such a huge rain with amazing wind, like tornado, appeared. And so much rain, like... Uh, I was thinking, if Bonjon has magical powers, then probably he, he can somehow affect the weather. Uh, his followers... His followers believe until today that he affects the weather, but in a positive way. But the thing is that uh, the weather mm, reacts on Bom John's actions, but not in a positive way. Uh, it's all connected, yes, and he does have psychic powers. Now, for secular people, this video is not meant, meant to be because they will not believe me. Bom John's followers will accuse me of imagining and being mentally ill and schizophrenic, of course, because this is how, what they do all the time. Of course, they can speak about miracles. They have endorsement to speak about Bom John's miracles, flying on white horse to the sky, uh, 
ordering things to the, the wild animals. He, they are allowed to speak about miracles, but as soon as someone doesn't belong to their group and speaks about Bonjon's miracles, which not necessarily are positive ones, then, oh, that person is crazy, mad, mentally ill, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, uh, ex-followers know that I am a person who experienced a lot of uh, invisible powers, psychic powers of Bonjon, but it doesn't mean that it's a proof of being a divine being. Asuras can also do miracles, not only devas, very important. For Christian thinking foreigners, uh, Satan is also able to do miracles, n not necessarily just Jesus, yes. So that, that night I realized that uh, something is not okay, something negative is there, that huge if he is a positive divine being and he wanted me to stay there, he should have protected me, he should have des defended me. So why is he playing double game that inside me in meditation he is calling me, come inside, come inside. And I'm not the first person who experienced many followers and many of his victims speak about inner experiences when Bomjon was calling them in dream in meditation. Even uh, one Russian follower told me, uh, Bomjon is telling um, that person, come to Hull Korea, come to Hull Korea. One American follower, one German follower, come to me, come to me, I love you. Always. He says inside people. But on the outside world, he's turning his followers against me. So what is this double gaming? That moment, it started to be, when I started to be very, very confused and very sad, what is going on? I thought I am coming to a holy person. I gave up everything in Europe just to meditate here in beautiful jungle. And then they are playing around with me, sending me to some village and I didn't do anything wrong. And now I know already that every time when Bomjon is just like giving orders for a group of followers to leave his compound, to go home. It's when he is picking up which people are uh, without conscience and can manage to see and hear his tortures of other people. It's, when I was chained and held there, he also sent away many people. For example, Mike Leon, he sent him to the Ratanpuri settlement suddenly. But they are not questioning. If you are a fanatic follower, you just bow your head and go. And by this way, you never learn what is he doing during those times when he just suddenly gives an order. Empty my compound. I need just two, three people around me. Those, those two, two, three people are his torture assistants. So back in 2011, I had no idea that the reason, the serious reason to suddenly send them, everyone out is that he is going to torture. He already captured some person and he's going to torture. I suppose it was Nang Salji whom he tortured that time because uh, just a few months later I learned from Tomek Tarnowski strange stories of Nang Salji going naked, uh, found in Jung, in Bom John's compound, sent to crazy house, I mean psychiatric clinic, coming back, strange stories. A silent Nepali married woman victim who was serving Bom John and Kempo. He destroyed that woman. So uh, that was a strange thing. And next time when I, I slept on a tree was also from outside of Bom John's compound, when I lived, now I don't recall exactly if I stayed in Vaiba's house, but probably, probably not, because he would recognize that I didn't come home. Or was it, yeah, I think he went to Kathmandu that night, so he couldn't check out on me. That time I was very innerly already dissatisfied living in a village, and it's not, wasn't, it was not a reason to, for me to leave Europe. And and I came again to the jungle and I thought I would 
and just sleep on a tree and stay in the jungle. I needed that energy of the jungle. I didn't need to meet Bomjon, but I was curious, I was thrilled. What is inside? Why is he playing around with me? Why is he telling me messages that he wants me in the jungle and in the same time he turns people against me? I wanted to know. So I slept on a tree just on the outskirts of his compound's barbed wire fence, just really one, one meter or something. Uh, during the evening I was meditating there and it started to be dark and I thought uh, it's too late for me to walk. So I slept on that tree <coughs> and I heard at night very strange things. Uh, someone, you know, there was a barbed wire fence double. Really at night it's very dangerous. You don't have lamp, you don't see. There was no light at all. You cannot see that Barbara and you would, you would scratch yourself. I was sleeping on, in the tree, on the tree above it and I tied myself with ropes so that I don't fall when I fell asleep. And then I hear someone walking near. But that was not a human being.